What is up guys and welcome back to episode number 57 now of the Leeds United career mode. In today's episode we have a few pre-contract deals to sort out which obviously we were trying to do in the last episode and we also take on Fulham for the first game of today's episode in the FA Cup. One of the sides who have knocked us out of the FA Cup last season. They actually did defeat us last season in the FA Cup I do believe when we actually ended up conceding a stupid penalty to them and ended up going out after we'd managed to win it in season one. But if I'm being completely honest with you I do not care about the FA Cup. It's just another game for me. Obviously, I've said the only competitions that we still have to win with this United side would be the Premier League title, the EFL Cup, and obviously, if we can manage to get into it, the Champions League. So, we won our FA Cup in the first season. That's completely done. We won the Community Shield in the season after from winning the FA Cup. We are currently sat top of the Premier League table going into this one here against Fulham, but obviously, this isn't a Premier League game. And we are sat in the semi-finals of the EFL Cup, which is coming up after this one here against Spurs. The first leg of that one, we will be travelling over to White Hart Lane to take them on over there, I think. So... We'll have to wait and see how we get on in the first leg of the EFL semi-final. Then we do go over to there. And if we do manage to get through Spurs, we will be playing in the final. I'm pretty sure Spurs are the only other real test in that competition in terms of uh, teams I fear. So if we manage to beat Spurs and go through to the final, there's no reason why we can't win the EFL Cup. And I do believe that we'll be able to do that here with this Legion United side if we do, in fact, manage to beat Spurs over the two legs. But first, we had this game here against uh, Fulham in the FA Cup. You can see the side that we've named, a much weaker side. It's basically my cup team. Not bothered at all about the result here today. It was just to give a few players a run out and just basically say to myself, it's another game. I ain't fussed what the, whichever way this goes. I'll happily take a uh, loss here. Gets me out of the FA Cup earlier. means I can save some of the players' fitnesses and stuff like that. So it'd be nice to win it again, but it's not on my to-do list. It's not something I'm really bothered about. So when we came into this one here against Fulham, I did obviously know my second team. And I basically thought to myself, if we win, great. If we don't, I'm not too bothered. And 17 minutes in... Emery Moore had the chance to get ourselves on the score sheet pretty early on into this one in all honesty. But unfortunately, it was nicely worked for me, but Emery Moore could only fire his strike wide of that post. It was uh, one of those shots where I literally had to take it on, otherwise the defender was probably going to catch me. In the end, I probably had a bit more time because he missed his tackle, but I didn't know that at the time. We sent our strike wide of the post, and, and luckily for us, it didn't end up in the back of the net. Second half, and Fulham got the first goal of the game. So for the second time in two seasons, we found ourselves a goal behind at Fulham. So... I think last time we played them away from home, this time we're on the road. It was really poor for me, and honestly, I don't know quite what happened to my defence. It was literally, I was sort of watching um, something on my computer at the same time as doing this game here against Fulham, and I sort of like took my eyes off the screen for two seconds, and my defence just opened up, and they actually made me pay for it. So, unfortunately, you know, we're out of the FA Cup, but like I mentioned at the start of the episode, I'm not bothered. I really don't care about it. You can see by the match facts, we were only slightly the better team. Fulham had one shot, one on target, and scored it. We had four and two on target, and basically didn't really do anything to actually aid ourselves getting through this competition. As I said, though, I am completely not bothered. I don't care that we've lost to Fulham there. We're still unbeaten in the Premier League, so imagine if it had been like Fulham not beating us in the Premier League, then I'd have been bothered. But I am, honestly, I cannot tell you how much I am not bothered about that game against Fulham. But I am bothered about this one, though. Yeah. FL Cup coming up, semi-finals against Spurs, first leg, it is a two-leg game, I forgot as well, when you play in the FA Cup, if you are, or the, in the EFL Cup, sorry, if you are in the semi-final, it does go two legs, I actually thought we were going to be at Wembley at the semi-final, and then I realised that that is only the FA Cup, so, I am going to say to you right now, regardless of what happens in this one going into here against uh, Spurs, I do believe it's at White Hart Lane, even if we were to lose a game, we still have a chance to get through in the uh, second leg, so... I'm not really too bothered about the two results in this game. I mean, obviously, if we lose to four, like 4-0 four to Spurs, then I will be bothered. But if we pick up a 0-0 draw at Hawaii Hart Lane, I honestly won't be bothered about that result. I'll take it and we'll just go into the next leg looking to win that one instead. You can see we have a new number of deals coming through. I think Baker accepted his contract. Yanazai as well accepted his contract. So he will be here at Ellen Road next season and replace Alex Owobi in the side at left midfield. You guys suggested that I should try and sign Bailey and Osuna. But unfortunately, both of those guys, I couldn't quite manage with the funds that we had. I could have probably just about squeezed it through. But I honestly didn't want to pay £29 million pounds for Bailey. In all honesty, I felt as though for a player that was only going to play and occasionally play the odd game in the Premier League, I didn't want to spend money for someone like that of that sort of, uh, you know, as amount basically. Basically. So the other one, Osuna, I did look at, but they actually came back and again said that they actually wanted something along the lines of like 14 million. I did have the money for that, but I just felt as though in terms of uh, our team and where we want to go for next season, if we are doing as well as we are come the end of the season, I feel as though we need players that are going to be good enough to play in the Champions League and the Premier League. And at the moment, I don't believe that um, those two guys, for the money that, they, that the teams are asking for them, I don't believe that they are warranting the money that they, the, uh, the clubs are asking. I mean, you look at Moses Simon, someone that we did inquire about from Genk before, they said they wanted £26 million for the player, and he actually went this season, I do believe, he actually signed for somebody else in my career mode for like £19 million. So it just 
honesty, it just sort of didn't make me want to spend this sort of money on those players. If I'd had those cash to splash, you know, if I had numerous amounts of millions here at Leeds, I would have done so, you know, but I wanted to make sure that we had a number of signings coming into the next uh, season, so then that way, squad depth-wise, we'd be in a good position for the next season in the Champions League, so that's what I did here, so apologies if I've upset any of you guys by not signing any of the players you suggested, but... You know, there's still a number of transfer windows to do in this season. And at some point, I'm sure we'll have the money to be able to do it. And we'll have just too much money to be able to do anything with. And at that point, we can start buying players that we wouldn't normally buy here at Leeds. But for the sake of the series, and for the sake of me being able to get myself into a good position in the Champions League, I just felt as though spending our last remaining money on a player or on players that didn't warrant the value that the clubs are asking for them, it didn't feel as the right thing to do. So at the moment, I just didn't decide to do it. So apologies, like I said, to any of you guys that are a bit, um, uh, well, what's the word, upset. Um, you can see there, by the way, as well, the two teams left in the semi-final of this EFL Cup were actually West Brom and Sunderland, I do believe, when Sunderland actually won the first leg by a goal to nil. So at the moment, we're looking at this thinking, hang on a second, both those teams, I say this, hang on a minute, because uh, West Brom did obviously draw 3-0 with us last season, uh, last game, last episode, sorry, and um, I say this, they're both, I think Sunderland sat in the bottom three along with West Brom. So at the moment, if we get through Spurs in the semi-final, there is no reason why we can't win the EFL Cup, and that'll be another trophy ticked off our list here at least. So you can see the side we've named going into this one against Spurs. It's basically a starting eleven in which I would be playing Premier League games with. I didn't want to take a chance here. Last time we played against them in the Premier League, uh, Vertonghen had an absolute stormer of a game. So I was looking for more from the uh, the Belgium. But 12 minutes in, Spurs actually created the first chance. It was Deli Ali on the edge of the area having an absolute rifle just go wide for himself. And 27 minutes in, we created our first chance. I do believe Eriksen was at the hand for it. But the former Spurs man could only fire his effort straight at the goalkeeper. I was absolutely gutted with that one. I thought he should have scored from that. It was nicely worked. And he should have actually put it either side of the goalkeeper and we'd have been in good business. But 64 minutes in, Spurs should have made the score 1-0. An absolutely wonderful cross into Jensen or Jansen. And Jansen could only fire his effort wide of that post. It should have been absolutely buried in my goal, but it wasn't. And I was very thankful because I thought we'd be one down at that point. And 76 minutes in, Eriksen again in the box this time. Takes his strike on. He's straight at the goalkeeper, but Alderweireld, the Spurs captain on the day, brings him down in the area to give us a penalty kick here. 77 minutes on the clock. Eriksen applauding the referee, saying thank you very much. Right decision. However, Eriksen didn't really do anything from the shot that he had, so I have to say, you can see here, we are going to take this penalty kick with Jan Vertonghen, the ex-Spurs man, going to step up and try and make it 1-0 here for us. 77 minutes in, I absolutely suck at penalties. There's just no two ways about it. My penalty kick taking is next level poor. That is an absolute joke. I cannot believe that we are not going into the second leg with a 1-0 victory on the day. And I am absolutely gutted with myself to miss that penalty. I said to you guys I would take a 0-0 into the second leg for me. But to have a penalty like I did there and miss it again, I really need to work on my penalties. Because it's an absolute joke that I miss as many as I do in this series. I might just start putting them down the middle every time. And then at least I know it's going to be on target. At least it's going to be on target. You know, Even if the keeper saves it, it, at least it's on target. So I can't say that about you know hit the post or put it wide. But I have to say, for the fact that we're missing so many penalties and that one was a quite an important one because it would have given me a 1-0 le uh, leg lead over Spurs in that one. I am thoroughly disappointed in myself. You can see here as well, Spurs offering for Ronaldo Vieira. The deal wasn't quite done yet over to QPR, even though they did, in fact, accept our counter-offer in the last episode. Um... You're going to see as well, we actually managed to sign Perea at the right back. And I actually declined Bellerin's contract here. The reason I did that was because I was telling myself in the game, if Perea accepts his, we're declining Bellerin's and we're going to get Suso along with Perea for the same sort of budget in terms of our wage budget than what Bellerin is in just one player. So I got two players basically for the price of one here. Uh, I could have got Hector Bellerin for 110, but I decided to go with Suso and Perea for 120 or 130k, I think it was I paid in their wage budget to those two guys. We actually had one more signing, hopefully, before the end of this window. That was Bruno Martins Indy from FC Porto. The centre-back was going to come in and hopefully do a job for us here at Leeds United. Going into this next season, I said to you guys I needed squad depth for the Champions League next season. So that's what most of these signings have been looking at doing, bringing in players that we can have in our side that are going to help us for the coming season. We then took on Brighton for the first Premier League game of the episode and the only Premier League game of the episode as well. Last time out against Brighton, we actually got a nil-nil draw away from home. So I was looking at this thinking we need to win this game. We need to prove a point to me and the fans that we can do better than what we did against them last time out. Um, I think you'll see the side as well. It's not actually the strongest side I could have named. The reason for that is because we just named our best side against Spurs there in order to try and get ourselves something out of that one, but was unfortunately unable to do so. Me missing the penalty kind of cost us in that one. But 
We played against Brighton here. I think my side is still pretty decent. Oh, good enough to beat them, in my opinion. No disrespect to Brighton. I believe, though, that our side here that I did name should be good enough to beat the uh, Brighton Hove Albion side that they do, in fact, name. You can see we are still top of the Premier League table, obviously. 13 wins, 7 draws, 0 losses so far. Still unbeaten in this Premier League season. Looking to make it 14 wins, 7 draws, and no losses. In terms of the goals, though, we've only allowed 11 goals to be scored against us, whereas Brighton have only scored 14. So, again, we should look at this game and be able to comp uh, get Get a clean sheet out of this one and if we didn't I'd be very disappointed you can see the team there you go on your screen it's actually a much weaker side than um what I was actually hoping for. I think we name Anwar, El Ghazi and Moore as the two strikers on the day. And we've got a few other players in there as well alongside them. I think about four as well included actually Reese Oxford and uh, Vergara as the two centre-backs. So two very young-ish centre-backs because Vergara is still like 24 or something like that. But they're still good enough to do the job for me, I believe, on the day. And the first chance of the game fell straight from kickoff. An absolutely wonderful start here at Ellen Road. I couldn't have asked for more than uh, with the start that we get here. Kalas down this right-hand side, goes inside, I do believe now. Gives it into, I think, it is, uh, oh no, Sacco gives it back out wide to Sacco. Sacco then gets tackled, but we managed to keep the ball at our feet as he gives it into Augusto. Augusto into Vieira. Vieira into Emre Moore. Moore turns, and my only thought at this point was smack it goalwards. And I did just that, and we managed to find ourselves the opening goal of the game. Literally four minutes in, it came at the hands of Emre Moore. I have to say, though, I'm a bit disappointed in the Brighton goalkeeper. I don't know why I'm disappointed in the Brighton goalkeeper to give us a lead here, but he should have done much better for the... Um, Brighton and Hove Albion inside, and I have to say, if that was my goalkeeper, I would be thoroughly disappointed in him. But I have to say as well, Emre Moore showing the class that he's got here for us at Ellen Road. I just basically got the ball with him, and I knew instantly I was going to turn and strike it, and I did just that, and we managed to find the opening goal of the game. Into the second half now, and we really should have been 2-0 up. Nothing really happened in terms of Brighton. They tried to get themselves back in the game a little bit, but nothing too dangerous for myself. Give the ball into Miguel. Miguel into Eriksen. Surely going to make it 2-0. One-on-one with the goalkeeper. I do not know why I tried to square this. I thought in my head that Anwar is still the top goal scorer and he hasn't scored in the last few episodes. So I wanted to try and get him a goal. I should have just smacked it with Eriksen. I should have just made it 2-0. But unfortunately, I didn't. It didn't matter in the end, though. We come away with a 1-0 victory away from home here. Or rather, at home. Um, as you can see, on the day, we were sort of deserved winners. It was a very boring game to play. Four shots, two on target and two and two on target, I do believe, for Brighton there as well. But we come away with the three points and that's all that matters. So in today's episode, picked up a win, picked up a draw and picked up a loss. We are in fact out of the FA Cup again for the second season running against Fulham. But for the, for the first time as well, we are into the EFL Cup semi-final. So that's very nice to see as well. So... We go into that second leg there against Spurs in the next episode. That one will be at nil-nil, looking to have a better performance than what we did against them just there at White Hart Lane, in which we missed the penalty. Fingers crossed we can go over there and we'll be able to do a job over them. I do personally believe that we will have a great opportunity if we can get into the final of the AFL Cup at actually winning it. So all we have to do, in my opinion, is beat Spurs and then it's basically a 70% chance, in my opinion, that we'll be able to win that competition. You can see here as well, getting an offer for Emre Moore. Count Rafferton said if you give us almost 40 million for the player, you can take him off our hand. But there's no way Frankfurt are ever going to accept that counter offer. I want to thank you all so much for watching this episode of Korean Mode. If you have enjoyed, hit that like button and I'll catch you all for the next episode very soon. As always, I've been Danny and I'm out. Adios.